Hello guys, it's Firefly here again, and in today's video I wanted to share something I put together that might become a useful resource to you. I originally wanted to make a video that takes a close look at engines, truck weight, and power to weight ratio. I made a spreadsheet that I plan to use as visual aid for the video, similar to the Google Sheets I used in the Tires video. But after I finished the spreadsheet and started writing the voiceover script, I quickly realized that there really wasn't as much to quote analyze as I thought. Or, at the very least, I don't need to step through every single engine option in the game, break down their pros and cons, and compare each one to their alternatives, like I did with the tires in my tires video. So I decided that I would just prepare the spreadsheet for distribution, share it with everyone using a link, and make a video introducing it. So here we are. So this is the spreadsheet I'm talking about. The link is in the description below. Feel free to take a look at it yourself or bookmark it in your browser or on your desktop so you can check it whenever you want. Now, unlike choosing the best tires, choosing the best engine for a specific truck is very easy and straightforward. Just equip whichever engine option that gives you the highest power to weight ratio shown in the menus, which is usually the engine at the bottom of the list. It's so simple because switching from one engine to another really only changes two things, torque output and fuel consumption. And for different options in the same engine set, the two are always inversely proportional. If torque output is better, fuel consumption is worse, and vice versa. And when you compare almost any two engine options from the same engine set, the torque advantage of the more powerful engine easily overwhelms the fuel consumption advantage of the less powerful engine. In fact, most of the time, the change in fuel consumption is almost negligible. So yeah, choosing which engine to run is simple. You don't need any spreadsheets to do this. If that's all you wanted to know, then I've already given you what you need, so feel free to close this video and go about your day. What this spreadsheet might be able to help you with is choosing the right truck for each job based on their power and weight. Since the power to weight rating in the menus is power divided by weight, from it you can't actually tell what the power or weight themselves actually are. So when you start loading cargo or attaching trailers, the power to weight ratio might change more on some trucks versus others and catch you off guard. Using this spreadsheet you can learn both the torque output and the truck mass themselves as separate standalone values, which you can use to predict that in advance. Although, despite that, I'm still mostly making this video and sharing this spreadsheet because I think this information is interesting and I just wanted to share. So, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be demonstrating different ways to use the spreadsheet and highlighting any points of interest. So, the spreadsheet has three different pages. You can change between them at the bottom of the page right here. The first page shows a list of all trucks with their body mass, max torque, so torque of the most powerful engine, and power to weight ratio, which is just this column divided by this column. So I guess it's technically torque to mass ratio, but everyone calls it power to weight ratio, so I guess I'll go with the flow. By default, the sheet is sorted by mass in ascending order, but you can actually go up to data and click on one of these to sort by any column you want in ascending or descending order. So let's say if I wanted to sort by torque in descending order, I would go here and click sort sheet by column C, Z to A, which is descending order, A to Z would be ascending. And as we can see, the most powerful trucks in the game are the Russian heavy trucks with the Russian 530T engine, which has the most amount of torque in the game. Make sure you click on a cell in the column that you want to sort before going up there to data and actually click on sort, because notice if I click on a different column and go to data, it'll say it'll sort by that column. So this is column A. If I click on B, it'll say B. So yeah, you can, you can do whatever you want with that, if we sort by the actual power to weight ratio, we can see that the highest power to weight ratio truck in the game is the new Tatro 805, which doesn't actually matter because it's an absolute meme truck. It's a titmobile with no autonomous winch. The Acteon is barely even practical, even with an autonomous winch, and the Tatra is basically the same thing, but even easier to tip without the autonomous winch. So definitely, if you go down this list, you'll realize that power to weight ratio alone doesn't matter, because a lot of these trucks at the top of the list, we know for a fact, are meme trucks, like the Orthog, the Tuz 166, a lot of them have really high power to weight just because they're really light, but being really light brings them other problems, right? And as we go down the list, some of these trucks become more useful. And on the other hand, if you go down to the bottom of the list, you would see that the Zig 605R, which is arguably the most powerful truck in the game, is all the way down here, pretty close to the bottom. So is the Cat 745C. In fact, a lot of pretty useful trucks are useful despite having a low power to weight ratio. So just keep in mind that power to weight ratio, if 
it's good, it's only one plus. If it's bad, it's only one minus for that truck. There's plenty of other places where the truck might have redeeming qualities. Although sorting this page by power to weight ratio can still help you explain the behavior of certain trucks in the game. For example, if we go down to the bottom of the list, you will see that the Dairy Longhorn 4520 and the Pacific P12 and P16 are way at the bottom, which sort of explains why they are notorious. Maybe not the P16, but the P12 and the Dairy Longhorn are notorious for stalling their engines when they're under a heavy load. Even the extremely heavy Kolob Twins and Antarctic have a higher power to weight ratio because their top engine is much more powerful. By default, this page is sorted by mass because I found myself learning a lot more when I was looking at it this way. The power to weight ratio column is color-coded, so if I sort by mass, let's just close this so we can go back to the default, if I sort by mass, I can compare the power-to-weight ratio of trucks in roughly the same weight class, which usually also have roughly the same frame add-ons and serve roughly the same purpose. For example, if we go down to the middle of the page, we will see that most of the American road trucks are in roughly the same place when it's sorted by mass. We can see that the more modern trucks, like the 49X or the 2 Cats, have a much higher power to weight ratio than the older ones like the White Western Star and the 114 SD, which is why they feel so much more responsive when you hit the gas. That is, again, not at all to say that the White Western Star and the 114 SD are bad though. In fact, I actually prefer them over the newer US trucks because a close to 20 power to weight ratio is still not bad, even though it's lower compared to their more modern counterparts, and they have lots of advantages elsewhere. Moving on to the next page, this is is a list of all the engines in the game ranked by their torque output. As we can see, the most powerful engine in the game is the 530T engine for the Russian heavy trucks like the Zix or the Kolobs or the Antarctic, followed by the top engine for the US super heavy trucks like the Cat 745C or the 10 wheel International Paystar Twin Steer. And following that, we have the new engine that just came out as a discoverable upgrade in Amir that's only available to the Vorongrad and the upcoming Tau. Phoenix. There is also a column telling you the engine set that the engine belongs to. I didn't make up this terminology guys, I didn't come up with these words. These words actually correspond to the name of the XML files that define the properties for each engine. This is the file path, you go here and then open initial.pack and then here, and then you can be like, for example, the CK1500's best engine, torque output 60,000. There are two reasons why I included this column in the spreadsheet to begin with. One is that if I needed to update the spreadsheet, because I made a mistake or the devs changed something, this would make the files that I need to find easier to find. The second reason is that this is what I use to group all the engines into different sets, so let's talk about that. The third page shows all the engines in the game grouped into sets, and also which trucks have access to each set. I put together this page because I thought that if you're a new player who hasn't completed your first playthrough yet, this might help you decide what to work towards. For example, say you're looking at this engine set, and you're like, oh, this engine set applies to these nine trucks, and I use five of them all the time. Maybe I should try to find this 2100T engine, because that would unlock a better engine for five of my trucks at a time. And then you can go to maprunner.info and then upgrades use the search bar and type in 2100t click on view location and that will tell you how to find that upgrade and by the way if you haven't heard of maprunner now you have this is maprunner and it was created by devious dizzle one of our fellow snowrunner players i use it all the time mostly for the interactive maps I have it bookmarked in my web browser, just like the spreadsheet, and I highly recommend that you do too, unless you're worried about spoiling the game, which it doesn't really even do, because the map reveals only key items and locations and leaves out everything else. If you're a veteran player, however, you're not going to need this information for deciding what to work towards, since you already have everything. You could still use it for comparing trucks though, or just to learn more about the game in general. This sheet is roughly sorted in ascending power and weight class, you start at the top with the smallest trucks and go bigger as you scroll down. I'm going to briefly go over this sheet from top to bottom and just mention anything that I think would be particularly helpful to know, and then it'll be the end of the video. To start things off, at the very top of the sheet we have the engine set for the old US Scouts. The 5.2 liter custom engine is the top engine for the Chevy starter truck and the Chevy Apache, and you can get it very early on in the game. It's in the first map you land on when you start the game, it is over here, and 
you can actually get it during the tutorial if you work your way up the map by taking the lane to the left of the road instead of taking the road itself. The engine almost doubles your torque output from the stock engine, so it's definitely a decent power upgrade for the starter truck. At the bottom of this set, we have the V10 engine for the Ford F750. The torque number for this engine looks crazy OP compared to everything before it, but it's really not because it's only available to the F750, which is significantly heavier than the other trucks in this group. If we take a look at the mass spreadsheet again, you can see that the F750 weighs well over twice as much as any of the other trucks with that engine set, and even with the significantly more powerful V10 engine, its power to weight ratio is still much lower than even the CK1500 and Apache with their V8 engine. What this also means is that if you put any of the other engines on the F750, its power to weight ratio gets nuked and it's barely able to pull its own weight. I've used the 750 with the 5 liter V6 engine, and yes, it can still move, but it struggles to climb inclines that you won't even notice if you were driving something else. This is also kind of annoying, because the V10 engine upgrade is actually really hard to get to. It's on the opposite side of Amandra from the Gateway, which is on the opposite side of Lake Cov from the Lake Cov Garage. The Amandra Garage is much closer, but you have to do a lot of work to unlock it. In fact, you'll most likely reach the upgrade before you unlock the garage, so it doesn't really play a role here. So unlock the V10, you basically have to drive from here to here, then from here to here, which is basically from one corner of the Kola Peninsula region to the other. It's still worth getting though, the F750 is a great truck and the V10 engine upgrade is required to unleash its full potential. Just know that when you go after it, you are in for a hell of a drive. Moving down the page, we have two engine sets for the Russian Scouts. If you don't count the Castum engine, which is very hard to unlock, the modern Scouts have anywhere between two to five times more torque than the old Scouts, depending on which engine from this set you compare to which engine from this set. While the Yar is much heavier than any of the old Russian Scouts, the Sentinel actually isn't. In fact, it's actually way lighter than the Loaf and has a higher power to weight ratio. Overall, there just really isn't much of a reason to use any of these guys over something like the Chevy CK1500 or the Sentinel, which offer better off-road performance and can carry more supplies while also being small enough to fit through almost any route that you'll be taking with any of these guys. I'm sure this is good news for anybody who cannot be bothered to unlock the cast engine, which is very difficult to get, perhaps harder than the F750's V10 engine that we talked about. I put the Marshall's picture in between the two rows because it actually has access to both engine sets for some reason. If we keep moving down the list, we have the Caterpillar forklift, nothing too interesting. The Hummer is actually a great scout, and it has incredible power to weight ratio thanks to these big engines, while also being extremely fuel efficient. Definitely a very good scout. I would say that it fits into a similar role as the CK1500 and the Sentinel. And then, moving down we have actual trucks. A ton of trucks in this engine set as you guys can see, but only two of the engines in this set is actually universal. The rest of them are all exclusives. The Lowstar is also in this category because it does have access to truck engines, albeit only these two. It doesn't have any exclusives and also has truck tires and a truck gearbox while being super light and small, which is why it's such a powerful scout. Right below the big fleet of US trucks we have the International Paystar, which has its own exclusive engine. The torque output is comparable to the set from above, but the Paystar is quite a bit heavier, so its power to weight ratio is not as good, although it is still a pretty good truck because it makes up for that by having advantages in other aspects. If we keep going further down, we have the Russian old set. This last engine is actually located in Yukon. It's actually not that hard to get to. If you're a new player who bought the season pass and you're looking for an early power boost for your Bandit, you can make a quick speed run towards this engine by visiting Yukon and then going back to Michigan or Alaska if you're willing to play the game in that way, of course. Course. Next up, we have the U.S. modern trucks. The first three are in a similar weight class as the U.S. road trucks, that giant fleet we just talked about, but all of their engines are much more powerful. If we keep scrolling down, we'll be at the Russian old heavy trucks. None of these trucks are actually particularly heavy, but all three of them are excellent trucks. Their power to weight ratio is a little bit lower than similar sized trucks on the U.S. side, but still more than enough, and all three trucks also have permanent differential lock. The Tega is super stable and 
and Agile, and has access to Balloon Mud Tires. The Voron D can do the Crane Bed Trailer combo, and the Voron AE is a speed demon that doesn't slow down nearly as much as other fast trucks when you start going off-road, thanks to his always-on diff lock. Below that, we of course have the Tatrin, which has a massive engine for a scout, and is the only scout in the bottom half of this list. When we get to the US old heavy truck set is when we start to encounter trucks that most SnowRunner players would actually call heavy. Unfortunately, their engines are pretty freaking lightweight, they're barely more powerful than the Russian engines that we just talked about, but some of these trucks are much heavier, which is why when you drive them, they feel clunky, whereas these guys feel responsive. Some of them are still great trucks though. The P12 has excellent ground clearance and can equip the logging crane and log carrier front add-ons at the same time. The Dairy Longhorn 3 is probably one of the best trucks for moving low saddle semi-trailers if you can get over its atrocious turning radius. It's pretty fast both on and off-road, it can carry a ton of fuel, and it's surprisingly low centered for how tall it looks. Moving on from there, we have the Russian modern truck set, and the torque numbers are apparently almost identical to the set above them, but the trucks themselves are just way more useful since they're smaller and can equip more useful add-ons. The A6 is the meta starter truck thanks to its stability and off-road performance. The A5 is another speed demon and is known for having the best off-road performance among the speed demons. The Voron Grad is also decent, and it has access to the last engine, which is the third most powerful engine in the game. Next we have the Navistar, which has two engines just for itself, and at the bottom of this page we have the US and Russian special engine sets, which contain the most powerful engines in the game, and are available to only the biggest trucks in the game. We've got several meta trucks here, the 745C is a great rescue vehicle and fuel carrier, and the only truck in the game that can move medium long without using a trailer. The Twin Steer can move four slots of cargo at high speeds without using a trailer. Most of the rest are niche trucks that are powerful but overall less useful than smaller trucks because they're missing a lot of important add-ons. However, the Zix 605R and A7 are notably not. They are the flagship trucks of the endgame meta because they offer incredible off-road performance while also being able to equip most add-ons. The most powerful engine for the US trucks is located at the peak of the mountain in Pedro Bay, Alaska. Before you climb the mountain for it, I recommend that you go a little bit further past the mountain and drive down to the end of this obscure little path. There are two items here not covered by any wash powers. The first one is a free ANK. It comes with off-road tires, which means you can immediately put it to use in Pedro Bay after you discover it. You don't even have to recover it and change the tires to make it usable, like most of the free trucks you find because they come with highway tires. The second item is at the end of this path, and it's just a scout task that only requires you to reach the top of the same mountain where you get the upgrade. Since you'll be climbing the mountain anyways for the engine upgrade, why not accept this task first so you can climb the mountain once and knock out both the upgrade and the task? Yeah. I also want to mention the second best engine for the Russian trucks. Yes, it's not the best engine in this set, but it still is a pretty decent upgrade from the stock engine, and it's very easy to get even at the start of the game. It's on the first map in Tamir, and it's not very far from the garage. It sits inside a deep hole just by the side of the road. If you're going to jump to Tamir as a new player to buy the A6 and maybe even rescue the Tega, you can also drive here real quick to grab that upgrade. This is the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys appreciate the spreadsheet or the insight I shared. Hope you learned something useful. If you did, please leave a like on this video. It only takes a moment for you, but it will help me out a lot. And also, if you find any mistakes in this spreadsheet down the line, please come back to this video and leave a comment telling me what's wrong so I can fix it. I do plan on updating this spreadsheet down the line to account for any changes the devs make or any new content. I'll also add the two Phase 5 Tatra trucks to this page when Phase 5 actually comes out. That's it guys, wish you a great day, and peace.